and welcome to Chagpar MD. I'm Dr. Anise Chagpar. Thank you so much for finding this video. In previous videos, we've talked about trying to estimate your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure. That's the number of calories that you need to consume every day to maintain your weight. Now, clearly that's important when you're thinking about losing weight or gaining weight um, because you'll adjust that TDEE. And one of the things that played into that equation was an estimate of your percent body fat. So how exactly do you do that? Well, this week we're gonna cover seven different ways to estimate your percent body fat. None of these is perfect, um, but they all have advantages and disadvantages and will get you fairly close uh, to estimating how much body fat you have. Now, in subsequent videos, we'll be talking all about body fat. What are the health consequences? The fact that BMI, while a good estimate of percent body fat, really doesn't tell the whole story. There is something called skinny fat where you can actually be of normal BMI, but still have a lot of visceral fat. Speaking of which, what's the difference between subcutaneous and visceral fat? What are the health consequences of these? And what can you do about body fat? Well, if you're interested in any of these questions, please do hit the subscribe button and the notify button. And as soon as that content comes out, it'll go straight to your inbox. But I thought we'd start first with how exactly do we figure out how much body fat we have? So what do you say? Let's get started and start thinking about all of these different ways to estimate your percent body fat. So again, we're going to talk about seven ways to estimate your percent body fat. None of these is perfect, um, but they do give you an estimate of how much body fat you're carrying and potentially where you're carrying it. More on that later. So there are many factors that influence body fat. Your genetics, your dietary intake, the amount that you exercise, stress, sleep, um, a whole myriad of factors. We're going to talk about more of that in another episode. In addition, body fat is not exactly the same as your body mass index. In another episode, which uh, I'll show you below, we talk about numbers that you need to know. And one of these is your body mass index. Now, body mass index is a very good estimate of your overall health in terms of your weight and obesity. And while it tends to correlate with the amount of body fat that you have, it's not exactly the same. And there is a concept called skinny fat where you can actually be ideal body weight, but still have more body fat than you ought to. There are different types of body fat, different distributions. Uh, so whether you carry this body fat subcutaneously or whether it's deep inside surrounding your organs, that makes a difference to your overall health. There's a whole episode coming up on talking about different types of body fat, different distributions, and what it means to your health and what you can do about it. Certainly, there are a number of health consequences to having body fat, particularly visceral body fat, in excess. So more on that later. I know, there's a lot that I keep saying more on that later, um, the best thing to do to make sure that you get all of this great content is just hit the subscribe button and the little notification button, and I'll be sure to come to your inbox with those episodes soon. But let's start with how do we estimate body fat? There are seven key ways that helps us to estimate the percentage of body fat that we have. The first is simply to eyeball it. Second is with a tape measure. Third is with calipers. The fourth is with bioimpedance. Uh, the fifth is displacement, and there are a couple of different ways of doing that. Uh, sixth is using CT or MRI, and lastly, DEXA. Now, these are in order of increasing complexity and increasing cost, um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how you can use each of them to estimate how much body fat you have. So the first is simply to 
eyeball it. And I've listed here a website where you can go and check out actual images of people at different percentages of body fat. So here I show you men, here I show you women, and it actually is pretty amazing how you can kind of look at your own body fat distribution just in a mirror and compare to these pictures and get a reasonable estimate of how much body fat you're carrying. Is it perfect? Hardly. But it is a very cheap, very easy way to start getting an estimate of where you are in terms of your percentage body fat. Now, if you want to get a little bit more technical, just grab a simple cloth tape measure. Um, measure your waist, your neck, and your hips. For those of you who don't know uh, what kind of tape measure to get or don't have a tape measure, you can get these really cheap on Amazon. And I've left you a link for uh, tape measures uh, in the description box below. So what do you do once you have those measurements? Well, the first thing to recognize is what is your waist circumference? Uh, for women, this should be less than 35 inches. Uh, for men, less than 40 inches. But once you have all of these measurements, probably the best thing to do is to go to the U.S. Navy formula calculator. This is a free calculator. It's available online. And I've linked to uh, the website here on this slide. I'll put it in the description box below as well so that it's clickable. But you just enter the metrics uh, that it asks for in terms of your age, your gender, and these, uh, these measurements and you will get a percentage of body fat. It's pretty accurate. Not 100%, but pretty good. If you want to get even more specific, try to get some calipers. Now, a lot of gyms will offer this. Doctor's offices will uh, offer this as well. But again, this is something simple and cheap. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, sometimes it even comes with the tape measure if you want to vary or see whether the two measurements are the same. Uh, and there are a number of videos that you can see online that tell you how to take these measurements. For women, it's really a measurement of your tricep, that's the back of the arm, super iliac, just above your hip bone, and your thigh, kind of in these three areas. For men, it's your chest, kind of that pectoral region, abdomen, and thigh. So these three areas. Many of the calipers come with a description of how to take those measurements as well. And they'll give you the conversions of how you can take those measurements and then turn it into a percentage estimate of your percent body fat. So if you want to move up from there, many of us will have a bioimpedance uh, bathroom scale. I know I do. Um, and these days, there are even cheaper bioimpedance scales that link right to your straight smartphone. Um, more links uh, from that uh, in the text box below. The way these bioimpedance uh, scales work is really with the concept that fat conducts less electricity than muscle. So the more resistance you have, uh, the more fat. But this is also influenced by a number of things. So your hydration status, when and what you last ate, um, whether or not you exercised, uh, whether or not you went to the bathroom, and so on. Nonetheless, it still gives you a reasonable estimate of what your percent body fat is. Now, probably one of the most accurate is displacement methods. These can either be done hydrostatically, where you're placed in uh, this uh, container of water and submerged, basically to see how much water you displaced. There are also air displacement um, methods uh, that will also calculate your percentage body fat. These are thought to be accurate to within 1% of your true body fat percentage. But then again, you're going to be dunked in a bucket of water, or there is the added cost of, of air displacement um, methods. Some of the simpler uh, techniques uh, that are a little bit more modern but still uh, carry with them significant cost are imaging techniques. 
Some of uh, the most common are using things like CT or MRI. Here I show you a CT scan where you can see the distribution of body fat. So that uh, fat that is outlined in yellow, which is right below the skin, is your subcutaneous fat. But the green fat, uh, which is the fat that's surrounding your organs, is visceral fat. Now, it's really that visceral fat that has a whole bunch of health consequences in terms of cardiac risk, diabetes, cancer, and so on. I have a whole video coming out on how visceral fat varies from subcutaneous fat, what are the health consequences, and what you can do about it. So please stay tuned and be sure to subscribe. But nonetheless, CT and MRI can give you a sense of where your fat is distributed. Similarly, DEXA is another uh, high-tech uh, technology that uses dual energy x-ray absorption to really look at what proportion of your body is fat, what proportion is bone, what proportion is muscle. Again, highly accurate, but kind of expensive. So once you've figured out how much body fat you have, how do you know how to interpret those results? How much body fat is too much? Well, it really depends on what your goals are. Certainly, you should not be less than 10% body fat if you are a woman. You certainly need some essential fat just for your body to function. Um, however, uh, you don't want to be over 25% body fat if you're a man or 32% body fat if you're a woman. This is considered obese. And obesity carries with it significant risks in terms of heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. We're going to talk more in subsequent videos about how you can reduce your body fat and get into that healthy range. So please stay tuned. Hit subscribe and hit the notify button so that you don't miss it. If you found this video helpful, um, please do share it uh, with a friend, like it, and make sure that you subscribe. Um, and let me know what you think. If you'd like other topics covered, leave me a note in the comment box below. I do try to get back to everybody. And remember, subscribing to the channel is free. I really am trying to make sure that we get good, evidence-based, quality information out to people who are trying to improve their health. Until next time, I'm Dr. Anise Chagpar wishing you all a safe and healthy week.